I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. I want to talk a little bit today about why you're probably going to find, for those of you who decide to go down this path, that the gyms, like normal workout, like lifting weight gyms here in Nicaragua, cost more than you might expect. In so much of the world, they're so cheap. And here in Nicaragua, you've heard that they're popular, but when you go, the price is completely affordable, but not in line with the lower cost with everything else, and maybe even a little bit more expensive than another country. What gives? Why are the gyms so expensive here in Nicaragua? Well, I'm going to explain that right after the bump. This topic comes up because I had someone who came to the country here and one of the things he didn't research was the gyms. He made sure that there were gyms, but he didn't look into the pricing of them uh, or the what their structure was like. He just thought, well, they're gonna be like everywhere else in the world, assumed that his experiences in another place would equate here and was very surprised when he got here in a lot of different ways when it came to gyms. And this was a major part of his lifestyle. So this was very impactful for him in an area it never occurred to him to do research in. It should have because it's a major thing for him, but it is what it is. We get our assumptions and sometimes you forget that not everything's the same in every country. So Nicaragua is a bit unique when it comes to gym culture and there are some business factors that play in that are very much worth considering if this is something you're interested in. And if you're interested in business, just understanding Nicaraguan culture, or you're looking at going to the gym, all these things may make this a good episode for you. Now, YouTube recommended for me a video where someone was explaining some different businesses that were a bad idea to invest in. And one of them that they talked about was gyms. The reason being, well, it's not really important why it's a bad investment because that's in the United States. But what was interesting, and I knew this, but I never really thought about it in this context, is that most gyms like Gold's Gym or Planet Fitness in the United States, which are famous for how cheap they are, make most of their money by people signing up with memberships, making it very difficult to cancel, and then basically having people pay forever, not mostly because they can't cancel, mostly just because they forget about it, because it's a very small amount and you may have 10,000 people at a given gym, each paying $10 per month, you're bringing in $100,000 per month and you're doing great because only a tiny fraction of them come to the gym, so you don't need to have a bunch of you know trainers or a bunch of equipment for the number of people that are paying, you just aren't getting that many. Plus, you, you have relatively even cycles throughout the day so that what people you do get are very spread out and you have a lot of opportunity to upsell things inside the gym. Oh, you want pr private classes. Oh, you want to buy a soda. You want to whatever. You can sell things and you can make a lot of money for the people who show up and you make a ton of money, even if it's in small increments from all the people who don't. That's a great business model and it mostly works in the United States, but even so, it's a difficult business. But here in Nicaragua, everything gets turned on its head for a couple of reasons. One, Gym culture is enormous here in Nicaragua. Most people, even those working very close to minimum wage, will spend some of their income on going to the gym, and they go religiously. It is very, very common to find regular, everyday minimum wage or near minimum wage workers who spend several days per week going to the gym. It's just a thing that Nicaraguans do, and it's great. Adds a lot to the overall health of the culture, and um, you know, it, it's a, a social thing where people go out and hang out in the gyms and see their friends and do it all the time. Remember, Nicaragua is a very go out and be social kind of place, so this is something that contributes a lot to that. So Nicaraguans are going to go. So if you join a gym, you expect that Nicaraguans are going to go out and actually take advantage of it, which which means your local neighborhood gym can not support anywhere near as many members as the equivalent gym in the United States. It's also worth mentioning that if you're going to go and start a gym in the United States, your rent is one piece of your cost, but the bigger piece is going to be all the equipment and the employees. Here in Nicaragua, you don't need as many employees and they're going to be very affordable. The rent is going to be a lot more affordable, but what's not more affordable is the gym equipment. Here in Nicaragua, it's going to cost just as much and likely in most cases a little bit more than it would cost in the United States. That means that when you're putting together a gym here, you're not going to do so that much cheaper, if cheaper at all, than in the U.S. So that investment is big, but the number of people you have to pay for it is smaller. That makes it a very tough business model. So naturally, they have to charge more for someone to be able to go to make decent margins or to even pay the bills and keep the lights on. And some things like electricity are a little bit more expensive. So often you end up with gyms that are not air conditioned here in Nicaragua. They do exist air conditioned, but they are not the norm. The average gym is not going to be air conditioned because that would add so much to the expense and it makes it more difficult to advertise because generally they leave the doors open and people driving by or walking by on the sidewalk can see everyone working out in the gym. That's what encourages you to say, oh, there's a neighborhood gym for me. Maybe that's where I want to go. If you close it all up, then they got to put up signs and advertise in light and try to much more difficult 
it costs a lot more to do and it's less effective. So there's not very much incentive to go down that path. Here in Leon, I know you can go up to the uh, Paseo Real Mall area and there's an enclosed air conditioned gym up there, but it's gonna cost you more money because it's a premium location. But if that's what you're looking for, obviously that's fine. So uh, the other big factor is that Nicaraguans who are often going to the gym, the majority of Nicaraguans who are going have very low incomes. Of course, there's some in the mid, mid class and the, the upper class who have plenty of financial resources and they don't really care about the cost of a gym. It's not a big deal at all. But the majority, especially the neighborhood gyms, especially where you're looking for those lower prices, and they are where you get the lower prices, the people who are going, the cost of the gym can be a truly significant portion of their income, uh, sometimes at, you know above 5%, maybe even 10% at an extreme case. That's a huge amount of your income to earmark for being able to go to the gym. Now, what this means is that unlike in the United States where people tend to sign up for the gym, so they're just going to spend 10 or $20 a month, and they stay signed up and only 1% of people go, it means and then people don't cancel because who cares, right? $10, you know what? Maybe I'll go sometime. It's worth the $10. So people keep it. And it's such a hassle to cancel. I'm going to, okay. But here in Nicaragua, that amount of money is really significant. That would be like paying thousands of dollars potentially a month, like $8,000 a month in the United States. Like that's a very difficult thing for someone to do. And they're certainly not going to overlook it. So if there's a situation where they're like, oh, I can't go to the gym for a while, they're going to cancel immediately. Canceling your gym membership is super important if you're not using it. So the number of people who would be leaving a gym membership in place while not attending is practically zero. Also, there's essentially no way to do recurring payments. There's very few credit cards and those that exist generally aren't going to be used in a recurring way. So for most people who are using the gym, they're paying in cash or they're paying in one time card transactions. Almost always they're going to pay in cash. That means that while you could have a membership that automatically renews, it's going to be very easy to cancel, right? I'm not going to pay you next month and I'm not going to come anymore. So do what you want to do. And the contracts are definitely not going to lock people in for something like that, right? In the United States, there's a lot of power to companies to take advantage of consumers. There's very few consumer protections. And when it's such a small amount of money, no one's willing to put up the fights for what few consumer protections do exist. Here in Nicaragua, it's not going to play out that way. It's going to go very much in favor of the person who tried to cancel. If you go and tell the business, hey, look, I'm canceling and not paying you anymore. And then later they try to say, no, we tried to charge you anyway. The courts are definitely going to say, but they canceled. You don't get to say otherwise. In the United States, there's all this like, we're not listening. We're refusing to answer the phone. We hung up on you. We ran away as you tried to tell us you were canceling. And they sometimes actually take the, the business's uh, side and, well, they took your money. So what are you going to do, right? Ownership or possession is nine-tenths of the law in the U.S., right? Do the wrong thing and you'll probably get away with it. Nicaragua is not going to be favorable with the businesses like that. So you, it's not an incentive to try to steal that money from the people like they do in the U.S. That is literally the business model in the U.S. Everybody talks about how these businesses uh, unethically uh, take money after people have tried to cancel, and they just don't let them cancel, right? Which they're not allowed to do technically, but the ability to get away with it makes it, yeah, you are allowed to do it. That's what being allowed to do something means. So those factors come together that in Nicaragua, the amount of money that a business, a gym, has to make off of each member who's actually showing up is quite a bit higher. Even though their overall cost is almost certainly lower by quite a bit, the amount that they can make on average from each person is far, far lower. And so the prices are equal or generally higher than you're going to find in the United States because every person who's going to go and use it is really going to go and use it actively and not keep memberships paying to subsidize other people. And if you are a gringo, which most of my audience is, and you're going to go join one of those gyms, you should absolutely expect, not be 100% uh, dependent on this, but assume you are going to get gringo priced when going to those gyms because most of the people who are going are living hand to mouth. They're barely able to afford it. It is a major expense for them. The gym is not really making any profit. It's basically an, a community outreach in many cases. It's essentially running on the margins. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a part of their community. If you're from outside the community and obviously have more financial resources, uh, people who are spending 10%, even 5% of their, their income on the gym are not 
going to be particularly unhappy if the gym decides to charge you a little bit more than they pay in absolute terms because in relative terms it is nothing compared to what they're putting into it and it's not your community right you're joining someone else's community and so expect this is a situation where standard pricing is likely not going to apply to you so i've heard of people who where uh, nicaraguans may only be spending five to ten dollars on the gym that an american may be spending twelve to twenty dollars on the gym but given all the things you know about it, I think that's completely reasonable, and I wouldn't complain about that. That is, if a gym is something you're going to use, yeah, spend a little bit more and help support that gym and help make it possible for all the people who are putting huge amounts, huge percentages of their incomes into going to the, into that gym uh, be able to afford it as well and so they can have it be a little bit nicer and uh, just appreciate the fact that you have a gym that you're able to go to that it's local to you in your local community most likely and that it is something that's able to be provided and that you get to be a part of that community that you get uh, a means an additional means of integrating into normal life there something that people do every day um just take it for what it is appreciate it uh but getting the the same low prices as nicaraguans is unlikely and even they pay more than uh, most places simply because of the the strange uh, and unusual economics of the situation. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe if you'd like to help support the channel. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. As always, that comes directly to me, helps make all this possible, the, the cameras, the, the time editing, all the things we do. We're very, very busy uh, here putting out all this content for you guys. And we really appreciate all the feedback, all the comments. Get down there and ask your questions, all the donations. It really does make a big difference. And as always, if you would be so kind as to share on social media or tell a friend and family member about the show and encourage them to, to follow along and join in our little community here. That would be fantastic. And I will see all of you tomorrow. And I'll do my best to pop four episodes up on the screen. Go ahead and click on one of those. Even if you just let it run in the background, it makes a big difference.